Meat Boy is here and today we are actually playing with meat. I am going to show you how to cook the perfect prime rib. Let's get started. Here we have our bone-in Wagyu ribeye roast courtesy of Frankie's Free Range Meat. If you guys can't get a bone-in roast, you know, any roast is just as good. Uh, we also offer regular ribeye roasts but that bone will give this a lot of flavor, especially considering we're dry brining this and it's roasting for a pretty long period of time. Uh, so in here, I just have a regular Mediterranean sea salt. And we're going to you know, rub a thin layer of this over the surface of the steak. Two to three days is ideal. You know, short notice, a day is fine. You don't want to go too long either though, because that can dry out the surface so much, you have a hard time cooking it without burning it. And of course you get this really like hard crust that's not too desirable to bite into. So two to three days is definitely the sweet spot. I'm going to keep this upright like this. So it has that nice, you know, fat steak. You know, cause if you leave it like this, thins out a little bit, less surface area is exposed to the air. In the fridge we go. And we'll be back in 48 hours. So it's been about two days. Ideally you can even go three days, perhaps even four depending on the size of your roast. And if we take a look at this, you know, the outside is pretty dried out. Uh, so about an hour or two before you cook this, you know, you want to take it out, let it get to room temperature, because if this is cold in the middle, it's not going to cook as evenly. Now that our prime rib is room temperature, before we throw it in the oven, one final step, that is to baste it with some type of fat. Here I'm going to use beef tallow, courtesy of Frankie's Free Range Meat. This is actually our Wagyu tallow. Normally, to get a brown crust on a steak, you need two things. A nice dry surface and fat. If there is no fat on every surface of the steak, the protein is just going to release moisture. It's not going to caramelize. The fat is going to evenly distribute that heat over the surface of the protein, allowing it to do so. So, rub the melted tallow on everything. My house is a little cold, so as you can see, you know, the fat is actually solidifying on the prime rib. But that's fine, because it'll melt as soon as it gets in the oven. So, you might have heard me speak negatively about a reverse sear in the past, but I actually like it a lot for prime rib. We're going to roast this at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, very low, slow for three to four hours. Then we're going to take it out of the oven, let it cool, then when we are ready to serve it, Blast it at 500 degrees or however hot your oven gets to get that nice brown crust, then we'll be good to go. By cooking it at 200 degrees, you now we're being careful, it's developing those nice slow roasted flavors. So in the middle, towards the bottom of the oven, 200 degrees. The most important thing here is that you have a probe thermometer or an instant read thermometer. For most people, you're going to want the internal temperature of the prime rib, the center, to be 125 degrees. That's going to be medium rare. To me, that's a little bit overdone. We're going to go for low 120s. I'm thinking 121, 122, so the center will be nice, rare, and red, and maybe the edges will be medium rare. It's been about two and a half hours. We're gonna check the temperature on this prime rib. So we put it in at 10.30, it's one o'clock now. And if we put the thermometer to the center of the prime rib, we're at about 90 degrees. So we still got quite a ways to go. Uh, this is probably gonna take like another two, two and a half hours to get up to 120, so. You know, I might even put this on like, it's been about four and a half hours now. We're gonna check the temperature. A bit over where we wanna be. So we're at 134 degrees which means we pretty much cook this to like medium, medium well. So we'll see how this comes out. That temperature, this is supposed to be pinkish in the middle and gray to the edges. The prime rib has rested to room temperature. It's nice and cool now. Oven has been preheating on the hottest temperature possible, 550 Fahrenheit. We're gonna put this in. It should take about 10 minutes, maybe 15 to brown up. We're not cooking it at all here further. What we just want to do is get the nice brown crust. And seeing as this is all dried out, it should be pretty easy to do. 
It's been exactly 10 minutes and now that I smoked the hell out of my house, the prime rib is nice and caramelized. And if we take the internal temperature, you know, it's about 105 degrees, perfect for serving. A little past where we wanted it, but still pink throughout. A little bit of gray on the outside. So my lovely sister is gonna try the prime rib. Hi! So I'm not wearing makeup for all of you, but not everyone could be as gorgeous as my brother. Just you know, ladies, he's single. Please date him. Gina, do you have anything else to say to my YouTube viewers besides that I'm single? Yes. You say in every video. He can cook and he's very and he's very nice. I'm not so sure about the last one, but just try it, you know. Ah, I don't know how to cut it, but it's all. You speaking English, Gina? Can you be any more handsome? Gina, how's the steak? Prime rib. Juicy. All right, let me try some because you don't like that review. This is really good. And I actually, oops. Honestly, I like the flavor. I like the flavor of the medium temperature a bit more uh, with the roast than I do when it's rare. And that's the one exception. Normally steaks, I would not like them this cooked. But when you have a nice roast like this, for some reason those roasted flavors are really brought out more when you cook it a little longer. So this is the bronchosaurus sized prime rib that my mother's having. And I wanna say thank you very much for cooking this. It took him uh, quite a few hours today. And look at all the marbling in it, it just looks amazing. And this is my favorite cut of meat. And of course that it's made by the best chef ever. And I take full responsibility for him not learning to cook from mama. I want to keep my reputation intact. Need I say, the best prime rib I've ever had. Thank you, Frankie. And okay. I hope to enjoy more of his meats in the future. Where can they get this? Frank's Free Range Meat. Delicious and tasty. All right. You guys aren't the best sales reps, but... Well, I don't have a better slogan. What do you want from me? Thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, as I said, you can get these rib roasts on Frankie's Free Range Meat. We will probably be sold out by next week of the Wagyu. We might have some regular rib roasts for you guys. Uh, so everything's going to be down in the comments below. You guys enjoy the rest of your night.